Hey guys, welcome to my channel where we cover everything you need to learn to become a solid voice AI developer. My name is Quincy, I'm the founder of Good Looking AI, and in today's video, we'll be covering the topic of what are webhooks. Now, if you're new to voice AI development or AI automations in general, understanding how to use webhooks will be crucial in order to create complex voice AI solutions. So with that said, let's jump in and explore the world of webhooks. Okay, so what are webhooks? Webhooks are like digital messengers that send data from one app to another when something happens. So for example, uh, hey, if X happens, then let Y know and also send this information along with it, right? Where X is what triggers the event, right? That could be a form being filled out or that could be a call ending, whatever it may be, this is like the triggering. And then why is the receiving system or the service that this uh, event should know about? And how are webhooks different than APIs? Well, unlike APIs, you have to ask for an update or request for data. Webhooks automatically push updates in real time. So they pretty much wait until data hits their endpoint, then they trigger a specific action. Now, why are webhooks important in voice AI development? Well, in the context of voice AI agents, they often need to talk to other tools like calendar systems, CRMs, databases, SMS tools, during or after conversations, and webhooks make those connections instant and seamless. And then there are three key benefits to using uh, webhooks. So the first one being is real-time communication. So after a voice AI agent completes a call or collects input from a user, you can send that info somewhere, right? So if you're you're building voice AI solutions, you're probably using something like Vapi or Retel and like an automation tool like make.com or NAN or Zapier, whatever it may be, right? We can use these webhooks to uh, send data to. And the second benefit is the triggering of automations. So webhooks can kick off workflows on make, Zapier, or some custom backend systems. Uh, for example, after a voice assistant books an appointment, we can send a confirmation. After collecting lead info, we can add them to a CRM. So as you can see, we can send data to these webhooks that will trigger a scenario or a workflow to complete some sort of task. And they also keep systems in sync. So webhooks ensure that all your tools in the stack are updated without delay. And it, it just creates a cohesive environment for us to uh, do more things with our voice AI agents and integrate with all these different tools in a synchronized way. So now that we kind of like broke down uh, in simple terms of what webhooks are, let's jump over to an automation tool make.com and start exploring ways and some simple examples of how we can utilize uh, webhooks to perform tasks. Okay, so now let's explore how webhooks enable us to connect our voice AI assistants. In this case, we'll be using Vapi to an automation platform such as this one, which is make.com. Now in make, there are three different types of webhook modules that you can use, but primarily as a voice AI developer, you're gonna mainly use the custom webhook and the webhook response. Now these custom webhooks wait for any data that gets sent to it to its uh, endpoint, and then it triggers an action or an automation to complete task outside the platform. And then webhook responses will return data back to the initial platform that sent the data over in the first place. In this case, it'll be Vapi. Now let's set one up so that you have a good idea of how this works. So I have this custom webhook, and then we're gonna to need to create a new webhook. So we're gonna click on add, and I'm gonna name this one, Vapi Webhook. And then we're gonna be given this link. Now, this is gonna be the URL endpoint that we're going to be sending the data to, right? And this is where we're gonna paste into Vapi, so Vapi knows exactly where to send the data to. So I'm gonna hit save, and I'm gonna go back to Vapi. And here I have a very simple voice AI assistant set up, and it just has a five-step task. We're going to answer any questions the caller may have about AI, get the caller's name and store it in a name variable, get the caller's email, store it in an email variable, 
and then we're going to trigger off a send email notification tool. Now this is what's going to actually send the data over to the webhook that we just created on make.com and then we're going to just greet the caller goodbye. Now just to kind of dive into the tool, so I have the send email notification tool. So this will send out an email to the business owner or the owner, in this case it would be me stating, hey, someone just called, right? And the data uh, that, that we have that we're gonna be sending over to make.com, the webhook is going to be the name and the email. And then right here we have the server URL. This is going to be the address or the URL endpoint that we're gonna be sending this name and email data to. So let's hit save. And the next step is to, is to call the voice AI assistant and send over some data. But before we do that, I wanna point out that because this scenario isn't in production, it's not actually being used out in the real world yet, it's kind of like in testing, we do need to manually run this scenario every time when we wanna activate this webhook to get any data. Now there's two ways we can do it. We can hit run once, which will run the whole scenario, or we can right click on this and only run this specific module. So now this webhook will be waiting for any data that gets sent to its URL endpoint. So now I'm going to call my AI assistant and see what kind of data that we get in. Okay, so we can see here that we have received data into the webhook. Now let's explore a little bit on what we got. So as you can see, we have an operation. Now the data that we're getting in is the payload. Now that usually comes in the form of JSON. If you're not sure what JSON is, I made a video, I'll add a link below so that you can get a good idea of the way structured data is set up and the way it gets sent across different services and platforms. But this would be the payload, right? So the data that we're getting in, if we click on tool calls, number one, function and arguments, we can see that data that we set up on Vapi, the properties, which is the name, which is the key, the value is Adam and the email, which is the key, and the value is Adam at gmail.com. Now let's see how we can work with this data so that we can execute things outside the platform, which is gonna enable us to build more complex voice AI solutions. Right. So I'm gonna close this and I have this email module with Microsoft Outlook. So as I mentioned earlier, we're gonna be sending out an email to the owner. Now I have this module briefly set up, but what we can do with that data that we're getting in with the webhook is we can map that data into this email to make it dynamic, right? So every time a caller calls in, we're gonna get the name, we're gonna get an email, we can extract that, map it into this email so that it gets sent to me, letting me know that, hey, someone just called. So let's do that. So I'm gonna delete this and I'm gonna go into tool calls, function, arguments, name. So now it will dynamically say, informing you that Adam called, and now let's dynamically map in their email. So email. So I should receive an email saying, hello, Quincy, informing you that Adam called, here's their email adam at gmail.com follow promptly your ai assistant so let's save this and i'm going to rerun the scenario this time i'm gonna run the whole thing and then i'll check my inbox to see what email that i get so as we can see right here it successfully went through so i'm gonna check my inbox and perfect so we can see hello quincy informing you that adam called here's their email adam at gmail.com follow up promptly your ai assistant Perfect. So now we can get a better idea of how these webhooks allow us to connect to all these various tools, which is just gonna enable us to create complex uh, solutions where we can connect to calendars, we can connect to booking systems, we can connect to whatever it may be. The opportunities are pretty endless if we understand how to work with webhooks. Now let's look at another simple but powerful scenario that we can create using webhooks. Let's say we want to log call details for every call that comes into our AI assistant. Well, we can achieve this through using webhooks again. So what we're gonna do is create another new webhook. So we're gonna click on add. I'm gonna name this one Vapi Call Report. And then again, we're gonna be given 
a unique URL endpoint, very similar to the last one. So there's always going to be a URL endpoint that we need to get and paste into VAPI so it knows exactly where to send the data to. So I'm going to copy this and save it and then go back to VAPI. So in our assistant, we can click on advanced and we will be taken to this messaging section. And then again, we have the server URL. So I'm gonna paste this in right here. And this is where it's going to send the end of call report to, to this URL endpoint that we just created on make.com. Now what's being sent? So because it's the, um, the end of call report, we're gonna be sending this one server message messages server messages sorry server messages to the end of call report now what's going to be sent so if we click on let me see it first if you click on analysis we're going to be sent the summary so you are an expert note taker it will pretty much just summarize the call in two to three sentences and then also we'll be sending over some structured data which would be the name the name and the email so again we can use this and map to our database, which in this case will be a Google Sheet, just to show you what that looks like. I have this webhook sample database with the created at name, email, call summary, and call transcript. So we're gonna be sending all that data to this webhook and we can again, dynamically map our Google Sheet. So each time someone calls in, we'll be storing that in a record somewhere. So. Let's make sure that this is fully set up correctly, which it should be. So E6, E6, awesome. So I'm gonna save everything again. A very common error that you can make is not saving things. So always make sure that you save your work. So now I'm going to call up my assistant again and send data to this webhook. Again, we also have to run it since it's not actually live in production, All right? So I'm going to just drag this here so that we can let Mick know that this is the scenario that we wanna run. So I'm going to right click this one and run this module only. And then I'm gonna send over some data. And then again, we'll look at the data that we're getting and see how we can use that to log it to a database. Okay, so I just ended the call and we can see that we just took in some data. Again, we, let's dive into it and we can look at the payload. So if we go to analysis, we have the summary. We also have the structured data. So now we can use this and map it into our database. And let's do that right now. Close this out. Now I'm going to, so I already have it connected to my Google sheet. So now, we can start mapping this data. So created at, I'm gonna do, drag this right here. And then name, we'll go back into analysis, structure data, drag this right here. Email, right here. We have phone number, but that's not what I set up uh, for my AI assistant to get. So I'm just gonna leave that blank. And then the call transcript. I think this Google Sheet is not up to date, but no worries. So call transcript should be, let's see, right here. And then let's hit save. So now I'm going to run this scenario again, this time run the whole thing so that we can actually log it to uh, our Google Sheet. Okay, so I just called my assistant again and ended the call and it successfully went through also. And yeah, so let's go to the Google Sheet and see what data it logged. Okay, so we're getting the created at, we're getting the name, we're getting the email, not the call summary, because I didn't update my Google Sheet on make.com, but same thing applies. And then we also have the call transcript. So as you can see, we can do a lot of things, a lot of powerful things when we understand how webhooks work, when we can use them, how we can use them to connect to a platform like Vapi, Retel, or whatever it may be to automation platforms, right? And webhooks are pretty much applied to a lot of different uh, platforms and tools. You can use webhooks on Notion, you can use webhooks on Webflow, 
you know, a lot of these platforms enable you to set up webhooks so that you can send and receive data, which will be, which knowing how to do that would be very beneficial and crucial for you to become a solid voice side developer. So hopefully this provided a lot of clarity to you on what webhooks are and how you can use them. Hey guys, so to wrap it up, webhooks are like digital messengers that take in data to then trigger a specific action. Whether that's for booking appointments, sending out follow-up SMS messages, logging call data, or even triggering a specific workflow, webhooks is that bridge that allows us to connect AI to tools that businesses run on. If you're serious about learning voice AI development, webhooks will be a game changer. If you found this video any helpful, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to stay up to date on beginner-friendly breakdowns such as this one. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.